However, this reactive method is basically useless when you put it against polymorphic malware that can rapidly change its code to get around such detection. And that's where the zero trust model comes in. Hey everyone, welcome back. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about a rather new approach to malware protection, which is known as Zero Trust Security. In this day and age, where we're seeing increasing sophistication in cyber threats, traditional security models are becoming weaker at protecting sensitive information and systems from malicious attacks. Specifically speaking, the rise of malware has posed a significant challenge to organizations across the globe. So in response to these evolving threats, the concept of Zero trust security has emerged as a revolutionary approach to cybersecurity that challenges traditional perimeter-based models and emphasizes a proactive comprehensive strategy for malware protection. So in this video, I'll be going over everything you need to know about the zero trust security model, including some of its key principles as well as some of the challenges this model faces. Now, before we get into the video, it's important to note that one of the best tools to use alongside this model would be a reliable antivirus. And that's because most reputable antiviruses nowadays are very effective and efficient at catching malware. So if you don't already have one or are looking for some suggestions, I'll be leaving some in-depth reviews on antiviruses that I personally recommend, as well as some discounts in the description down below. So make sure to check those out. Okay, so let's kick this video off by talking about the evolution of cyber threats. The landscape of cybersecurity has transformed dramatically over the past few decades, having a well-defined perimeter protected by firewalls and antivirus software is no longer sufficient to protect people from cyber threats. The digital age has brought in a new era characterized by the widespread use of connected devices, cloud computing, and increasingly sophisticated array of malware. Cyber criminals have gotten used to exploiting vulnerabilities, bypassing traditional defenses, and infiltrating networks undetected. And one of the most common tools these criminals use to carry out these attacks is malware. Now, Malware, short for malicious software, includes a wide range of harmful programs designed to compromise the integrity, confidentiality, and availability of data and system. Traditional approaches to malware protection usually relied on signature-based detection, which involves identifying known patterns of malicious code. However, this reactive method is basically useless when you put it against polymorphic malware that can rapidly change its code to get around such detection. And that's where the zero trust model comes in. A zero trust security model represents a whole shift in cybersecurity, thinking that it challenges the conventional idea of a trusted internal network and an untrusted external network. Basically speaking, the zero trust model operates on the principle of never trust, always verify. It assumes that threats can originate from both external and internal sources, which highlights the need for continuous verification of the identity and security status of all users, devices, and applications. Now, let's talk about some of the key principles of a zero trust security model. First, we have the least privileged access principle. Zero trust advocates for the principle of least privileged access, which which makes sure that users and devices only have the minimum level of access required to perform their tasks. This minimizes the potential impact of a security breach and restricts lateral movement within the network. Next, you have Microsegmentation. Instead of relying on a single parameter, Zero Trust emphasizes on the implementation of microsegmentation, dividing the network into smaller isolated segments. This limits the movement of attackers, containing the impact of a potential breach. Then you have continuous authentication and authorization. Traditional security models often rely on point-in-time authentication. In contrast, Zero Trust promotes continuous authentication and authorization, which makes sure that users and devices are continuously verified throughout their interactions with the network. And lastly, we have device and user behavior analytics. Zero Trust users advanced analytics and machine learning to monitor and analyze user and device behavior. By establishing a baseline of normal behavior, weird behavior that indicates potential security threats can be detected and addressed in real time. Now. Before we move on to talk about how this model plays into protection from malware, let's take a quick break to talk about today's sponsor, Surfshark One. Surfshark One is a bundle that includes almost all of your cybersecurity needs, from a reputable antivirus to even an ad blocker. While there isn't one tool that can completely guarantee your privacy, having all them together in one neat package can greatly enhance your cybersecurity. 
And that's why Surfshark is offering five products in one package. So why pay for them individually when you could get them in one simple, neatly packaged bouquet? This package includes the award-winning Surfshark VPN, which allows unlimited devices, data speed, and protection. The Surfshark antivirus that secures everything on your devices from your webcam to your files. The Surfshark private search engine, which allows you to browse ad-free without any digital footprint. Instant data leak notifications with Surfshark alert and Surfshark Alternative ID, which can generate a whole new online identity and proxy email for you. The best part about this is that this bundle comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, and all these apps work on all major platforms like Windows, Mac OS, and Android. So if you'd like to check them out, I'll be leaving the bundle link at the top of the description down below. Big thanks to Surfshark for being today's sponsor, and let's get back to the video. Okay, so this zero trust security model is particularly effective in addressing the challenges brought by malware and offers a proactive and adaptive approach to threat detection and mitigation. And it does this through four main strategies. First, you have dynamic malware detection. Zero trust's emphasis on continuous monitoring and behavioral analytics allows organizations to detect malware that may not show traditional signatures. By analyzing deviations from normal behavior, suspicious activities indicative of our presence can be identified, allowing for a quick response to mitigate potential damage. Now you have the isolation of compromised devices. In the event of malware infection, zero trust micro segmentation capabilities allows the isolation of compromised devices. By containing the threat within a segmented network, the spread of malware can be restricted, preventing it from affecting critical systems and data. Other than that, Traditional endpoint security solutions often struggle to keep pace with rapidly evolving malware variants. And so, zero trust for endpoints involves continuous monitoring and verification of the security status of devices accessing the network. This makes sure that the compromised devices are quickly identified and dealt with, which reduces the likelihood of successful malware widespread infection. And lastly, we have secure access controls. Here, zero trust focus on least privileged access makes sure that even in the event of a user or device being compromised, the potential damage is limited. And so, malware attempting to exploit compromised credentials or escalate privileges will face significant obstacles and eventually fail to meet its goal. With that being said, while Zero Trust Security presents a great approach to malware protection, its implementation comes with its own challenges. For example, adopting a Zero Trust model usually requires a significant overhaul of existing network architectures and security policies. This can be a complex and resource-intensive process, especially for organizations with legacy systems. Also, the continuous verification and authentication process, which are the main point of zero trust, can, in some cases, lead to concerns about user experience. And so, striking the right balance between security and usability is really important if you want to make sure that the security measures do not hinder productivity. Other than that, Many organizations operate with a mix of modern and legacy systems, and integrating zero trust principles seamlessly into existing infrastructures can have a lot of compatibility challenges. And finally, implementing and maintaining a zero trust security model requires a specialized skill set. And so organizations may need to invest in a training or hire cybersecurity professionals with expertise in zero trust principles. And that's it for today's video on the zero trust security model and how it can be implemented in modern day malware protection practices. Don't forget that using a reliable antivirus goes hand in hand with such an approach, since most reputable antiviruses nowadays operate with mechanisms similar to it. So if you don't already have one or are looking for some suggestions, I'll be leaving some in-depth reviews on antiviruses that I personally recommend, along with some discounts in the description down below. So make sure to check those out. Also, if you like the content or found it useful, make sure to like the video and subscribe to see more of it. And if you have any questions or suggestions, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments as I love to interact with you guys. And that will be all for today and I'll see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day.